All right, amen, amen. We are live right here. Uh, as we wait for people to come on, just go ahead and start typing in uh, your name, where you are from. Don't forget to send those hearts. I do want to send a shout out to Apostle Amos Howard, who is live right now. I just jumped off of his Periscope to actually do my own, but I want to encourage you that if you are in the Nashville, Tennessee area, you want to make sure that you are at 8 o'clock in the morning, that you have joined Apostle Amos L. Howard right there in front of Tennessee at the Living Truth Church. Uh, he will be teaching uh, some of the same principles. I'm a product of that ministry. He'll be teaching some of the same principles right there in Smyrna, Tennessee, going live tomorrow at 9 a.m. He's doing periscoping live tomorrow at 9 a.m. You want to make sure that you are there. All right, from Smyrna, Georgia. Bless God. Uh, we actually did uh, credit as your character this morning. Uh, as you guys know already, we do the financial piece. We do the Bible study in the morning. We do the life application in the evening. 7 a.m. we do the Bible study. We talked about how credit is your character, Proverbs 22 and 1 tells us that a good name is more desirable than silver and gold. To be esteemed is more desired than riches. Uh, we need to understand that God cares about our name. So this afternoon, uh, good afternoon, Louisiana. God bless you. God bless you. I do want to share with you that if you are on iOS, slip from left to right. Uh, uh, go ahead and share this broadcast with your friends. We're going to do a life empowering message where we're actually going to be talking about your credit, how to get your credit back in order, how to get your credit straight. If you already got credit, how do you maintain? We believe in God for 700 credit scores this year. We're going to be teaching life application followers. Faith, faith for financial freedom simply says this. It's simply we believe this uh, in the name of Jesus that everyone in the body of Christ should live a life of prosperity. And prosperity is not limited to finances. I'm going to say it again. Prosperity is not limited to finances, but Jesus knows that it is. It does include finances. Amen. When we say prosperity, we mean your health. We mean your peace. We mean your joy. We mean your finances. We mean your family. We mean your love life. All those things uh, are considered prosperous. It means, it means to be made whole. And uh, we are focusing. We know that the body of Christ has been preaching the prosperity message for so long uh, but nobody's telling us how to do it. Nobody's giving us practical application on how to actually obtain wealth. We're going to be doing it every single day right here uh, on Faith for Financial Freedom. I'm on every morning between 7 a.m. and 7.15 a.m. And then we come on also, also on the afternoons at 7.30 at every single day. Again, the Bible studies in the morning and life application principles are in the evening. And we ask you to join us and actually share with us uh, as we move forward. Uh, also, we actually have a Facebook page. We have two Facebook pages, Faith for Financial Freedom. Join that group. Join that group. We actually join that group. And then also we have, have excuse me, uh, Who I Am in Christ. Who I Am in Christ, we're teaching right now how to uh, prove that there is a God without a Bible. How to prove there is a God without a Bible. Right now, there's so many uh, heresies that's going on across our nation, across our world, all over social media that, you know, we serve a white God or we serve a, uh, every day we do every day, uh, Monday through Friday, we do from, uh, uh, the seven fifteen to and seven o'clock in the evening on the weekends. Uh, it's not those times I'll be just doing some things that God has shared with me. There's things I want, want to do. And I say, you know, I'm going to stick to my schedule. Uh, so we'll be doing other things, be more creative. I promise you, but it will bless your soul. If you see it, uh, the title, my titles are usually something that, uh, are something that's interesting is both of us best way I can put it. Uh, but uh, we will definitely be sharing uh, on the weekends. I'll probably do it more than twice a day uh, on the weekends because I just got so much information I just want to pour out. This is my passion. If you don't know, uh, it's my passion. So let's get started. Let's get started. Uh, we're just going to believe God. Oh, we are believing God for 100 consistent uh, viewers every single day. I call them para warriors, my para warriors. We believe in God for 100 consistent viewers by the end of this month. And when you're given this kind of information free of charge, I just believe God, he's going to explode this ministry and do great and mighty things. So your credit report, what is credit? We talked about earlier today that credit is not a score. Credit is your character. Everyone put that Your Credit is your character. I'm going to say it again. Credit is your character. It's not a score. It's what people say about you. It is your financial reputation. Well, credit actually is your reputation, but we're going to be talking about today your financial reputation. And that simply says, I got a glare right there. I'm going to try to turn it just a little bit. I'm be in between two um, recess lighting, so uh, you guys have to excuse me. Yes, but credit is your character. It's not, um, you, you have to pull up that from earlier today, the one from this morning. Pull it up. It's still fresh at Periscope. And then we actually upload these to YouTube as well as GM Howard Ministries. No, it's GM Howard Ministry, GM, GM Howard Jr., Ministries uh, on YouTube. All of these are archived there. And uh, also we have some other Bible studies that we'll be putting on there as well. JimHoward.com will be back up and running in the next 30 days. We actually are uh, revamping the site and getting that done. I'm excited about what God is doing just in the ministry, my ministry and exploding this thing globally. So your credit report. 
Uh, we talked earlier about your credit report um, and how, yes, uh, and how um, your credit report actually is what the uh, your your the lenders, the lenders and the credit agencies actually report to what's called a repository, and they're talking about you behind your back and you don't know it. They're ma- and people are making decisions about you. Determining what they will or will not do based on a credit and credit score. So the best way I put it this morning, and I don't want to do the same game again. Uh, we're going to use a different person this morning. We use President Barack Obama. I want to use somebody interesting. Um, somebody interesting. Let's say um, somebody controversial. Give me somebody controversial. Um, put in, um, ah, I got it. I want you to name one thing. Since we have four users in the room, I want you to name one thing about... Uh, Donald Trump. One thing about Donald Trump. One thing about Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Uh, one thing about Donald Trump. Go ahead and if you just type one thing that you know about Donald Trump in, uh, I, I, I'll be waiting for that. And also, don't forget rude. That's one thing she said, rude. And don't forget to send those hearts. We need hearts. We believe in God for hearts. Uh, arrogant, rude. Uh, so, pretty much what we're saying is that we made a... Uh, some opinions about Donald Trump when we've never met Mr. Trump. Uh, I do agree. I think he is arrogant. I do agree that I think he's rude. I think that many times um, that uh, he's beside himself, honestly. I think many times he's beside himself. But that's exactly what a credit report is. It's when people make a credit decision or decision about you based on your reputation and they don't know you. Uh, we've heard information about Donald Trump. We've read books about Donald Trump. We've seen him on television. But no one, I can't say no one. I know I haven't personally met him. And I definitely have an opinion of him. And most people have not met him when we have an opinion of him. That's what a credit report is. Nobody who, most of the people who read your credit report do not have a simple clue who you are. But they make a decision on you based on what other people are saying about you. Every single month, uh, you have a lender who is one of your creditors, whether it's Visa, MasterCard, your car note, your student loan people, they send information to a credit repository saying you pay late or you don't pay. Whether you pay on time, pay late, or don't pay at all, they send that information to um, the credit repository. In return, the credit repository sends that information to other people who want no information about you. The problem is that all the time it's not accurate. And they draw conclusions on you based on the information that they're sharing with each other and you're not even in the transaction. Out of the information they share, when Visa, MasterCard, Discover sends this information to the credit repository, the credit repository takes all of this information that they're collecting about you and they put it in a big, a large algorithm called a credit score and it spits it out. And your credit scores can range, uh, depending on TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, all different types of numbers. Now, today we're going to actually talk about the credit report. On Monday, we'll be back actually talking about your credit score and actually how to get it up. And we may get into that today. I usually try to keep this within 15, 20 minutes. I'm horrible at keeping that time, by the way. Um, but we're going to, I mean, I'm trying to get you information, though. Um, we're going to try to get this thing done and actually out there. So, your credit report, your credit, your credit repositories are, there are three major ones. Make sure you get your pens and paper out there, pens and paper. Number one is Experian. Number one. Number two is TransUnion. And number three is Equifax. Now, many people ask me all the time, why do they all have different information? Well, the reason they have different information, number one, is that you have different credit repositories are larger in different regions. I'll say it again. Different credit repositories are larger in different regions. So TransUnion is very large in the Midwest. Experian is very large down south in Tennessee, where I'm from. Equifax, when you go out west, they're, they're huge. And so different people or different lenders. So if I have a small business in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, I will report to Experian because it's not one is cheaper. You have some of your larger companies that report to all three. Now, every time a lender sends information to the credit bureau repository agency, they're paying them every single month to pay to, to report on you. Yeah, they charge them. So if I'm a small business, I may not want to report to all three. I may only want to report to one. So with that being said, if I have good information on my credit report or bad or negative uh, and it's going to one credit bureau and not going to the other, then, of course, it will equal a different score. Number two, the second reason is they have different methods of determining your credit score. Everyone's algorithm is, is, I'm not saying that word right, algorithm, algorithm, 
y'all know what I'm saying though. That big long formula that they use uh, to determine uh, what your credit score is, they're not the same. None of those, none, none of those are the same. And so with that being the case, uh, they come up with different credit scores. Now your credit scores can range uh, with Equifax between 300 to 850. 300 to 850. With Experian, it can run between 330 to 830. Say it again. With Experian, it's 330 to 830. And then TransUnion, they start off at 150. And then it goes up to 934. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Algorithm. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> um. Uh, 150 to 934 with TransUnion and um, those are the different scores. Now I've been doing, I've been in the banking industry pretty much for 20 years for all my life, all my, all my, really all my life. I started in 19 and um, I've never seen a 300 or a 150 score. Uh, yeah, that's that's the process. Um, that's I've never seen a credit score lower than, you know, 500. Usually it says, usually it says, uh, not enough information or score too low to score or something like that. I've never seen a score that low. Uh, but I will say this. Uh, I've literally, and I've read over, oh God, probably, Jesus. I've owned two mortgage companies. I've worked for different lenders. For, oh my God, I've owned two. Oh, uh, Jesus. I bet you I've seen at least 10,000 credit reports. I'm not exaggerating. At least 10,000 personally um, over the years. And I've never seen a score higher than an 820. 820 is the highest I've seen. Um, so they say 934. I, I haven't seen it. I just haven't. Uh, when you start getting people in the 800s, which is very rare, they can walk in and do whatever they want to do. Um, usually we go into a piece of why credit is important and all that kind of stuff. We may do that on uh, Monday, but today I want to get into this because I usually get sidetracked and uh, I want to actually get into the meat and the materials of stuff. So I came up with an A to F scale. A to F scale on what your credit score is. Now, you know, uh, my mama told me that wasn't nobody average uh, in our in, in 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 our house. We couldn't bring C's home. C meant average. Uh, D stood for dummy and F stood for fools. We definitely didn't have no fools and no dummies in our house. So I'm believing God that everybody that's listening to us uh, has a A score uh, within the next 12 months. In the name of Jesus, we're going to tell you the principles to do how to how to actually get that credit score up and actually what to do in the name of Jesus. Yeah, um, I, I had it tough coming up. I, I couldn't ring no seat. I will. I tell you what, it changed my life. It really did. I thank God uh, that they were hard on me when it came to my grade. So this is your credit report card. This is your credit report card. I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, uh, but it's this is your credit report card right here. Uh, oh, that's right. It comes up in reverse, doesn't it? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, email me at george at gmhoward.com. Again, that's george at gmhoward.com, and I'll send you a copy of all the information that we're actually looking at today. Uh, george at gmhoward.com. Again, we don't charge for any of this stuff. This is strictly ministry. Uh, we want to see the body of, uh, of, of Christ and the kingdom of God empowered financially and start walking in what God has called us to do. Your credit score. Now, Everything on your that composes of your credit score does not weigh the same, but they all weigh something. So it's comprised of these five different things. Number one is your payment history. Number one is your payment history. It's, comp it's comp comp composed of your payment history. Number two is your amounts owed, and that is really, really big. And we're going to talk about that in intrinsically probably on Monday. The amounts owed is huge because most people don't understand that. And that's one of the things that are killing people's credit because they don't understand how the amount owed affects you. And um, the length of your credit history. The length of your credit history is the number three. Number four is new credit. New credit. New credit. And then number five, uh, the type of credit used. The type of credit used is number uh, number five. Uh, it really should be a number six on here, and it's called inquiries. Inquiries should be a number six on here. Uh, when I made this, I think I left that out. Um, just, nope, it's not on here. Inquiry should be on here. While it's not weighted as much, it should be uh, part of this equation. So, when we start saying your payment history, the amount that you owe on a credit card, the, the length of your credit history, new credit, and the types used, and inquiries, what do we mean? So, we say payment history. Paying your bills on time over a consistent period of time is your payment history. Well, well I'll tell you what, you can pay it however you want to. There's a history. They go back as much as seven years. They go back for seven years talking about you. 
So I know I'm not the same person I was seven years ago. I begin to think that as I get older, I'm a little bit more responsible. And uh, but seven years ago, it's still on my credit report. Uh, the amount you owe. I think let's go ahead and deal with it now. Uh, the amount you owe, you should never, ever, 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 if you can help it, have more than 35% of your credit card balance owed. So if you have a credit card for $1,000, you should never go more than $350. If you have a credit card balance of $1,000, you should never have more than $350. $2,000 will be $700 and, and you know, so on. Don't ever use more than 35% of your credit card. Now, why? As you go over the threshold of 35%, it begins to count negative against your credit. Now, I know it's stupid. I, I, listen, I didn't make these rules, but I know the rules, and I think we all need to know them. It's dumb. They only give you credit if you don't need it and if you ain't using it. It's stupid, I know. Even if you're paying your bills on time, if your credit cards are maxed out, it's going to reflect negatively against you. Now, this is what they say. They say if you're maxing out your credit cards and spending over 50% of the volume of the credit card volume, uh, if it's maxed out or... How can I say? If you owe more than 50% of your credit card balance, then it's negative against you. <laughs> I'm telling you, more than 50% of your credit card balance is negative. They say because you seem like you're extending yourself on that credit card, so you must be cash short, therefore your credit strong. They only want to give people credit who don't use it. So to get a good credit score, 35% or less balance is what we want. Bring it down. Start paying that thing off. We're going to teach you how to pay it off. We're going to teach you how to pay it off. We're going to speak in your life that you're going to be debt free. Debt free. We're going to put a financial plan together for you. I'm telling you, all this is going to be done uh, right here at uh, Faith for Financial Freedom. And again, if you're in the Nashville, Tennessee area, if you're not, if you periscope in tomorrow at 9 a.m., tune in to Apostle Amos L. Howard, part of that curriculum and breakthrough I've been a part of. I think I was a part of it for like 12 years. Uh, wonderful ministry. He's been preaching this for like 20 years before anybody else was doing it. And um, excellent ministry. Uh, tune in tomorrow. Periscope will be 9 a.m. He's doing Breakthrough Live. Uh, part of the 12-week program. You guys can tune in live right there with that. Okay, so your payment history. 35% of your... Uh, Apostle Howard just joined in. Apostle, thank you so much. We were just talking about... You and your ministry, uh, just, I mean, literally, I mean, we just started talking about it. Um, tomorrow at 9 o'clock, Apostle Amos L. Howard will be live streaming from Smyrna, Tennessee, teaching you the principles of how to get out of debt. And one of the things that we always say I, right here, I, in the mornings, we give biblical principles. In the evening, we give life application. Uh, right now, we're doing life application. But in Breakthrough, you're going to get both. I teach this all the time. Faith without works is dead. Uh, your faith is your biblical principles. Your work is your, is your life application. You got to have both. If you have uh, the faith without the works, it doesn't work. But if you have the work without the faith, it doesn't work. You got to have a balance with that. And that's one of the things that ministry is going to bring you as a ministry of integrity. And uh, you need to join in live streaming tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you believe in God to be debt free, it's going to change your life. Um, I see this all the time. Poverty is a mindset, but broke is a temporary condition. Poverty is a mindset, but broke is a temporary condition. Pastor Howard and the Breakthrough team, I'm praying for you. They will help change your mind about money. They will change, help you change your mind about money. And of course, you already know the end of that statement is money will change his mind about you and stay around for a whole lot longer. So with that being said, we're talking about your credit score. Uh, it's composed of 35% your payment. Your payment on your credit score is composed of 35% of your credit score. The amount you owe. Remember, we just got done talking about that balance owed over 35. If you are 35% or above, you want to get that down. You want to get it down to zero. Bless God. But it is negatively affects your score when you go over 35% of the balance of that credit card. So, again, if you at a thousand, if you are at a thousand dollars, you do not want to be more than 350. Uh, that's 30% of your score. So that's huge. It's just as important as your payment history. And then the length of credit history. The longer you have a credit card, the better. I'm going to say this again. The longer you have a credit card, the better. Now, I'm not saying you have to use the card. I'm just saying that the longer you have it, the better. Now, I really want to break some things down for you in this in this lesson that I wasn't planning to do that we typically do when we're in classroom assignments. But I, I'm being um, really, really, it's really up on me to actually share that. So we're going to share that in just a second. New credit. New credit is not always good. It's not. When you find somebody, well, the bank says this, when you find someone going to get new credit, new credit, new credit, new credit, what is the bank and how does the bank interpret that? That says they're cash, they're cash strapped. 
They're going and going. They keep going and getting new credit because they must be having some cash challenges. So if you apply for three or four credit cards and you get them all of them in like a two or three month time, what that tells the bank is something's wrong. They, they applied for too much credit over a short period of time. They Something's wrong. So it goes against you. Now, over a period of time, it'll fall out. But you don't want to go out and get a whole lot of new credit at one time because it will negatively affect your score. And it's 10% of your credit grade. 10% of your credit grade, and then um, uh, the type of credit used, 10%. Now, we're going to talk about the type of credit used. Uh, in just one second, you have individual, joint, uh, authorized user. You have, oh, we're going we're gonna to go into all those different types of account. Give me about a good five minutes to get there. Uh, I want to go into something, though, real quickly. Uh, I don't have a pencil and paper with me. I tell you, you know what, that's unlike me, too. Uh, I tell you guys, make sure you got a pencil and paper because we're going to be sharing some things and I didn't get mine. So uh, somebody's going to be the authorized note taker for the group. Uh, we're going to do that. Somebody's going to be the authorized note taker for the group. Um, I think I've got a pen in this drawer. And no, I don't. Okay, so uh, if you have, let's say you have three credit cards. You have three credit cards. I want to teach you how this credit, kind of this credit score goes and how uh, this debt to, what we call debt to credit ratio, how this debt to credit ratio actually goes. So uh, your debt to credit ratio is, and I actually got a pen right here. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're going to say you got American Express, Amex. You got a Discover. And you have, and this is really hard over Periscoping, but we're going to believe God is, you guys are getting it. And we're going to say you got a MasterCard. All right. Now, we just said the things that affect your score are your payment history, the amount owed, the length of your credit, new credit, and the type used. We're going to use the first three. Okay. Amex, Discover, and MasterCard. Okay, we're going to make this real quick. We're going to use all round numbers to make sure we actually get in this thing. Okay, all round numbers to make sure we're getting it. Let's say the MX credit card you've had for 10 years, the Discover you've had for five years, and MasterCard you had for two years. Okay, the MX credit card, you have a balance that you, the maximum balance that you can have, what we call an available balance. When you get a credit card, they say your available balance is $10,000 or $5,000. That ain't mean, that don't mean that's what you use. But that's what they allow you to use as your line of credit. So we're going to say that the Amex credit card, uh, we're going to say it's $10,000. The Discover card, we're going to say it's $5,000. And the MasterCard is $2,000. Just using round numbers. All right. And then the last one that we're going to talk about is the amount that you owe. The amount that you owe. Uh, the Amex card, let's say that you've paid it off. You've been a good steward. You owe nothing on that credit card. Absolutely nothing. We're going to say on the Discover card, let's say that you're trying to get that down. You haven't actually done it yet. You owe $4,000. And then on your Amex card, you have a total of, say, $1,000. Okay? So you have a, you owe $1,000 in that, which is 50%. All right? Now, watch how this works. Your available line of credit, your available line of credit with your credit card. I'm, I'm teaching you how they look at your credit so you know how to work the system. You got to know this. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You got to get this information. The Edmix card, Discover, and MasterCard, all together you have a $17,000 line of credit. I like round numbers because I want you guys to get this. So we're going to make it $5,000 for the MasterCard. $5,000 for the MasterCard. Gives you a $20,000 line of credit. All right? That's $20,000 line of credit. What you have. Of that $20,000, you've only used $5,000. So you're in good shape because your, your total line of credit compared to the line of credit that you use is only... 5,000, 25%. How did I get the 25%? I divided the 5,000 into the 20,000. I divided the 5,000 to the 20,000 and it gives me 25%. Actually, it's 20%, excuse me. That's, yeah, if it was 4,000, it'd be 25%. 5,000, it'd be 20%. So you are at 20% debt to credit ratio. You take, so the way you do that is you like, you add up all of the, um, you add up all of the, High balance is your available balance, and you add up all of what you owe, and then you divide what you owe into the high available balance, and it will give you what's called a debt to credit ratio. If that number is above 35%, it affects you negatively. So, in this situation, you at 20%, so you're good, right? Right. However, what most people would tell you is, girl, you want to pay off that credit card and close the account. Don't do it. Do not do it. I'm going to say it again. Get real close up on you. Don't do it. Why? I'm going to show you why. you at 20%, right? If we close this, and I know you guys can't see this and it's backwards. If we close out that American Express card, what did we just lose? We lost 10 years on our credit report. That's huge. Remember, the length of your credit 
is 15% of your credit card. We just lost 10 years on our credit card. Then we just lost $10,000 of high credit balance, of our available balance. So now, instead of this being a $20,000 balance, it dropped to 10, or a high available balance, it dropped to $10,000. It went from 10 to 20, because we no longer have that available credit to us. But we still got the same debt. So now we were at a 20% debt to credit ratio, but now we have a $10,000 high available balance, and we have $5,000 in debt. What did that do to our debt to credit ratio? It raised it to 50%. So while we were okay at 35%, or we were at 20%, closing out that credit card, we lost 10 years, we lost $10,000 of high available of high available credit, and as a result, it took down our credit score, because it took up our debt to credit ratio to 50%, and it took down our credit score as much as it could be as much as 35%. Something that simple, that we don't know. So this is what I, I, I suggest you do, and this is what I propose. Um... Number one, pay off all your debt. You do not want to keep your debt. Um, pay off all your debt. Leave your credit cards open. And then I would I would actually sign up for some kind of security service so that you're not being exposed. Because what you can do is that if you have a lot of open credit, uh, if somebody was to ever um, do identity theft with you, you know that if you have actually signed up with someone else, that you're actually protected and exposed and they would actually block that before it can happen. Because if you got good credit and you got high credit balances, or well not balances, but high available credit to you, then you are exposed. So you don't want to do that. So make sure you actually sign up for some protection for that. And it's really cheap. It's like like $25 a year. Uh, really cheap for your cheap for your identity theft exposure. Um, but you want to do that. Make sure you do that. As you pay off your credit cards, do not close out the accounts because you're losing things that is actually working for you instead of against you. Um, so that's that. So your report card. Remember we talked about that A to F scale. Your A to F scale. If you are a 520 or less, my mama said, if you bring an F home, you are a fool. But we're going to believe by faith that it's going to come up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> a 520 score. You couldn't bring no Fs home. If you are a 550, it's a D plus to a D minus, a 550 score. You got a D credit score. It's not good. And it's actually, if you got a 580 score, I put it at a C, 580. And these are for mortgages. I'm going to turn that back. These are for mortgages. Credit cards are totally different. Every industry is different. And it, man, there's so much background I want to give you, but I only got 30 minutes to do this stuff. I usually try to do it in 20, but we probably going to be 30 minutes today. Man, I've been 30 minutes already. Lord Jesus. See how quickly this stuff go by. Um, B, a B minus to a B plus is a 620 credit score. If you got a 620 credit score, really that should be a C. I'm being honest with you. Things have changed since the reference since 2007. This really should change. Uh, but on this paper, I got a B is a 620. It's really a C, like a C minus now. Uh, credit standards have got a lot tougher since the, the banking industry has failed. Uh, an A minus was a 650 and an A plus was a 680 plus. A 680 plus, uh, I gave you that today is a 720. So I got to update these sheets. Again, these sheets are from when we were doing Breakthrough 10 years ago. I was a part of that team. Um, they're still strong and going. I want you to tune in tomorrow at 8 a.m. No, I'm sorry, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Periscoping. Apostle Amos L. Howard. Uh, Apostle, put in, if you're still online, put in your, um, or if anybody who follows Apostle Howard, put in his Twitter name so people can actually add him and follow him when he goes on tomorrow. Uh, if anybody is follow following Apostle Amos L. Howard. Uh, with that being said, y'all, it's been 30 minutes. I got so much more to share with you. There it is. It's, oh, nope, that's not him. Somebody else has joined. We're going to talk about the different types of credit, the different types of credit that you actually have, what goes on your credit report, um, I mean, your negative credit and how it affects you and actually how to get this stuff off your credit. Uh, if it's negative, how to get it off, how to dispute, how to negotiate. Did you not know you can negotiate stuff off your credit report? <laughs> I've done it. I've seen it done. Matter of fact, I've authored a book called Edit Your Credit. Uh, we sold out a long time ago and I've never reordered any. Uh, I'm, I'm believing God. We're actually writing something now called the Credit Encyclopedia. Um, it's a three-part series because the book was so thick it was intimidating. It was 192 page, the big book, workbook. And uh, it was so thick it was intimidating, but we did sell out, I believe, in, uh, in a very quick period of time. Uh, we believe in God now for a Credit Encyclopedia. And uh, we're going to actually have this stuff on the internet, man. And most of this stuff is going to be free. Some of the stuff that costs me money, I got to recoup my costs. Um, but 
most of the stuff that we're doing, like you email me today at georgiajamhoward.com. I'll email you this stuff. So you, when we come on to Monday doing the same thing, uh, this stuff, you'll have access to this, this information. So as we get ready to close out today, I'm, I'm sorry. You guys know I'm only 30 minutes or less. I try to be 20. Um, we started at 730. It's now 732. So I'm over my time limit already. Uh, as we get ready to close out, we're going to close out in prayer. Uh, don't forget the Proverbs 22 and 1 says that a good man, a good man, uh, name is above silver and gold and esteem is uh, a good man. A good man's name is above silver and gold. Uh, that's what he says. A good man is better to have a good name than silver and gold. And we talked about this Bible study this morning about what God thinks about credit. Credit is not this score, the stuff we're talking about now. We are talking about the financial part, but I want you to get this and I want you to get into your spirit. Credit is your character. Credit is your character. If you did not listen to the to the thing this morning, man, it'll bless your life, it'll change your life because people do not teach what I'm teaching. You got to get the credit is your character part. That's so significant. You will not get the credit bureau stuff if you don't get the credit is your character part. You got to get that. And then we're going to be finishing it on Monday. Again, we come on at 7, 5, 7, 27 o'clock a.m. and 7, 15. We're here live every single morning or well, Monday through Friday. And then on evenings, we're here at 7, 30 to 8 o'clock. We'll be here uh, every single day, Faith for Financial Freedom. Join us on Facebook, YouTube. YouTube is GM Howard Jr. Ministries. Uh, all this stuff is archived. We'll be uploading it. Uh, Who I Am in Christ on Facebook as well. Our Twitter account is GM Howard Jr. And our Instagram account is GM Howard Jr. We're using so social media at its best. Join those groups. If you need to email me for any information, I will respond. That's George at GMHoward.com. Let's close in prayer. God, we thank you right now for who you are and what you've done. We thank you that you are a covenant keeping God. We thank you that we are the seed of Abraham and that God, you've chosen us to be a blessing to others. He got, you said to us, God, that blessed be God who has blessed you. So God, we, you blessed us to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. We speak now to God. We can be trusted. God, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, if you can be trusted with little, you can be trusted with much in the name of Jesus. So we say, God, if you get it to us, we can get it through us, God, which means, God, if you get it to us, God, we'll be faithful and obedient to do whatever you told us to do. We will pay our tithes. We will push the ministry in the kingdom. And we'll also uh, let people see you through us in the name of Jesus. We thank you now for debt free living in the name of Jesus. We thank you for breakthrough and financially in the lives of the people of God. We serve notice on the enemy that 2016 is our year in the name of Jesus. No longer can your weapons hold us down because we're getting in power through knowledge in the name of Jesus. We're applying faith to our works and seeing us set free in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you've already set us at liberty and those you have set free are free indeed. We thank you, oh God, that you've already given us peace and joy in the Holy Ghost because it pertains to our finances. We, we mock and bring down stress and worry in the name of Jesus. No longer are we stressed out and worried in the name of Jesus, but we got peace in the house in the Holy Ghost, God. Peace that passes all understanding. Joy, unspeakable joy. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. It's in your son Jesus' name. We pray and know that we have the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you guys my, well, you guys see me tomorrow, absolutely. But Monday at seven seven twenty seven and seven fifteen. If you guys see me, between, it's on on the weekends. It's gonna bless your life because I'm gonna be speaking off the cuff on some things that just God has spoken into my spirit. Uh, doing that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you.